Good evening, everybody. Well, second try on this camera. Second upload of this video. It froze up on me. Only had 12 seconds left of processing, and it froze up on me. And I couldn't undo that. And I just put my camera down for a second here to bring up the article. Brought my camera back up. My camera blacked out. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. Okay. This is a sad, in a way, video. Well, in a lot of ways it is, because you just don't treat a person like that, you know. But two weeks ago, Greg Price put together a video, supercut a Pennsylvania Democrat Senate, Senate candidate John Fetterman's Planned Parenthood campaign speech from September 11th that highlighted all the times Fetterman stumbled over his words or got confused. Well, the man has had a stroke. And he's fighting hard to get back. He's on his feet. His arms move. He speaks. His eyes work. His head works. So it must have been a light stroke, I pray. You know? So he slurs his words. Well, my goodness. Don't we all do that once in a while? Does that mean that we've had a stroke? Or we've been to the bar too long? Come on now. My God, in response to this video montage, NBC News reporter Benjamin Goggin published an 800-word story accusing Price of doctoring a video to make Fetterman look incompetent. Goggin described the supercut video as deceptively edited and claimed that the social media was teeming with similar deceptively edited videos that exaggerated Fetterman's speech problems. He even went on to boost that he got TikTok to delete the videos but added that he so far has failed to get Twitter to delete them as well. Well, I pray Twitter doesn't. Unsurprisingly, Greg Price fought back. In a lengthy Twitter thread, Price slammed NBC News and Benjamin Godden, slamming them for the false claim that the video was doctored and accusing them of being regime propagandists who are trying to protect their preferred candidate in the race. That's a very big possibility, isn't it? Yeah, they'll do anything. I think they call it cutthroat. Price has also appeared on the Ingram Angle on Fox News to discuss the NBC hit piece. Well, my God, the man had a stroke. Give him a break. He's fighting back. He's coming back. He isn't in a wheelchair. He isn't in a coma. He's still alive. Oh, my God, these people. Where's the compassion? Well, that's what my title of this uh, video is. Where's the compassion? All right, let's put you down, Mr. Fetterman. And I'm not sure if this is a replay or a redo on this video, uh, but I'm going to bring it up and redo it. I mean, there's no harm in redoing it. And this is the one about IP addresses from China, Russia, Iran, and Cuba got COVID small business loans. According to the Small Business Administration Office of the Inspector General, millions of applications for COVID business loans came from foreign IP addresses in countries, including Russia, Pakistan, Mexico, Afghanistan, and China. A report released on September 12th by Inspector General Hannibal where found the Small Business Administration received applications for COVID Economic Injury Disaster Loans, EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, from millions of foreign IP addresses, and while most applications were rejected, tens of thousands of loans were disbursed. 
economic injury disaster loans were designed to provide relief to American small businesses that suffered hardship as a result of the government's pandemic response. And while the Small Business Administration put in place layers of controls to prevent abuse by foreign countries, the IG found that individuals using foreign IP addresses were able to access the application system. The IG reviewed. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Listen to these numbers. 233,000 applications from March 20 to 2020 to November 12th of 2021 and found the SBA approved and dispersed 41,638 COVID-19 EIDL advances and grants for 1.3 billion to foreign IP addresses. Among those applications submitted from IP addresses in Iran, Syria, and Cuba received 10 of thousands in the EIDLS. All three countries are designated state sponsors of terrorism by the U.S. State Department. Nearly 166,000 taxpayer funds went to Iran. Syria received 23,500 and Cuba received 276,000. Then there were the countries that received millions. Pakistan got 47.2 million. Afghanistan received 1.58 million. China received 1.58 million, and 4 million went to Russia. Mexico alone accounted for 157.8 million in COVID relief money, while Canada and India raked in 183.3 million and 143.7 million, respectively. Both the United Arab Emirates. 10.6 million, Saudi Arabia, 2 million, benefited as well. Who allowed that to happen? What's the rat behind this? The Inspector General concluded that the application submitted from the foreign IP addresses indicated potential fraud that may involve international criminal organizations. Small Business Administration Associate Administrator of the Office of Capital Access, Patrick Kelly, dismissed the report, nothing noting that the $1.3 billion in taxpayer money represents less than 0.04% of the $342 billion in advances and loans approved by the SBA. Boy, oh boy, it just... <clears throat> it gets worse, don't it, people? Told you. <laughs> well, let's see what else I can find here, folks. Well, let's try this one here. Now, this one here left me with a lot of questions. And I couldn't find the answers to them. Sure couldn't. Because I'm not sure what's up Biden's... <clears throat> I'm not going to say it. No words. You guess. Biden is leading the radical left freak out over Georgia... Maloney's win in Italy last week. Maloney will be Italy's first female prime minister, shocking feminists. The White House is apoplectic after the right retook Italy's parliament and joined Sweden's governing coalition. It fears a neo-fascist backlash is on the increase globally. Biden said, you saw what happened in Italy's election. You're seeing what's happening around the world. The reason I bother to say that is you can't be sanguined 
about what's happening here either. S-A-N-G-U-I-N-E. Sanguine. I gotta look that word up. I have no idea what the heck that means. Oh well. Biden's warning about Melanie. Mm, excuse me. Following attempts to label Mega. Mm, well, pardon me. That was rude. I'm having a little pop. I just got done with my supper. And I'm having a little pop. Whew. I guess I should have waited to do the video. I am so sorry. Biden's argument is weak because Trump was president for four years and didn't pursue fascist policies. Fascist policies. One of the most peaceful presidents in recent U.S. history, he respected constitutional rights. The present White House is different. Gorgia Maloney, Giorgia Maloney, Capitate, Capitate, not Capitate, oh my God. Captivates Americans. There's nothing in there either but pop. It's just Pepsi. I swear. Honest. It's just Pepsi. <sighs> Americans who oppose the radical left. Future Italian PM speech exposes why global elites dread her. She said in Italian, Please answer me these questions. Today's agenda. Why is the family an enemy? She asked. Why is the family so frightening? There is a single answer to all these questions. Because it defines us because it is our identity. Because everything that defies us is now an enemy of those who would like us to no longer have an identity or to simply be perfect consumer slaves, she continued. So they attack national identity. They attack religious identity. They attack gender identity. They attack family identity. Google-owned YouTube removed the World Congress of Families video after it became viral. This is election rigging. Ooh, I hope I don't get in trouble here. Being pro-family and Christian breaks YouTube's rules. YouTube withdrew the, the video Wednesday for violating its rules, according to National Review. Being pro-family and Christian breaks YouTube rules most likely Melanie's remark challenges globalists who want to homogenize national transitions and break up the nu nu nuclear family. The Italian right overreacted for political. Politically, the White House felt the Italy earthquake. The election of Italian far-right leader Giorgia or Giorgia, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's G-I-O-R-G-I-A. Now, I had a Georgia uh, cousin. Yeah. But this is G-I-O-R-G-I-A. Giorgia? I don't know. Her last name is Melanie. M-E-L-O-N-E. Maloney. Maloney. Rocked Europe. Stoking worries of the new right-wing movement amid economic misery and a blazing war in the East, it prompted Biden's administration private anxiety. The White House put on a brave face, claiming Maloney's win represented the Italian people who will and expressly confidence that Italy would remain a solid partner of the West. It's a NATO ally, a G7 partner, and a member of the EU. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean Pierre, I love saying that, <laughs> sorry, said Monday, so we will work with the new Italian government on the full range of shared global challenges, including supporting Ukraine as they defend themselves against Russia's aggression. U.S. Republican politicians have praised Maloney's rise. Praise Maloney's rise. America is stronger when Italy is strong, independent, prosperous, and free, tweeted Senator Tom Cotton. The proceeding in a summary of an article that originally appeared
article that originally appeared and that's at the end of it. Okay. So I had a lot of questions. First of all, when I read this, overlooked it, um, I wondered what scared Biden about it. And what she said got kiboshed by YouTube. So we can't talk about religion. We can't talk about... Uh, wait a minute, let me go down here. Family, we can't talk about family. Isn't that what this is saying? She continued. And so they attack national identity. They attack religious identity. They attack gender identity. They attack family identity. Then Google owned YouTube, removed the World Congress of Families video after it became viral. This is election rigging. They withdrew the video on Wednesday, violating its rules according to National Review. So being pro-family and Christian breaks YouTube rules. My God, am I going to be able to post this? I don't know. I may not be able to post it. Well, I'm going to try. I don't want no marks against me. I'm new. I ain't even been here two months yet. <laughs> Doing videos. I don't know what to do now. Okay, I'm going to say so long for now. Yeah, I'm going to try to uh, check this out and uh, just see if I'm going to get kiboshed. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. God bless you. I'll be back.